Chapter 14 Nate pulled his hands away. Why do you thank me? Nate asked. His voice was gravelly and unsettling. Maxine turned away, not sure how to take the sudden change in his voice. Nate reached up and turned her face back to him. Tell me why you feel so compelled to thank me. She couldn't speak to him, not the way he was acting. Instead, she looked beyond him towards the wall where a vampire had smashed her body up against earlier. Her stomach was tied in knots. The vampire had meant to kill her. Nate caressed her cheek and turned her face up to his. The vampires. You're thinking of the attack. They have smelled your blood. They will not give up until they feed on it. You will never be free from them again. They will continue to hunt you down. They want to kill me, she murmured, but she knew he was speaking the truth, knew they would not give up until they had done just as he had said. Her problems had just gone from bad to worse. She flinched at the thought of it. She would need him to get out of this nightmare. You have to save me, she added. I can only promise to get you out of here. His look was stern and serious. It made her think that he did not care whether she lived or died. Perhaps being a werewolf meant that he had no compassion for someone that was not of his kind. She reached her hand up to try and touch him. As her fingers barely caressed his skin, she stilled. Werewolf. And then she remembered what he truly was and how dangerous he could be. Maybe knowing what he was and what he was capable of was for the best. It would allow her to understand the world she had stepped into. Nate sensed the uncertainty she was feeling. He tensed his body and moved himself away from her. I don't want to die. Please help me live and survive this. She spoke with urgency and desperation. She only felt safe knowing that he would protect her. To have him near made the fear a little easier to bear. I can't promise you your life. He stood and walked to the other side of the room. He cut himself off, emotionally and physically, from her, leaving Maxine lying on the cold, hard stone floor. Maxine felt naked and humiliated. She wished almost wished the room was engulfed in darkness again so that he could not see her. With nowhere to go, she embraced her arms around herself and held tight in some way, trying to find comfort. He looked down at her. You thought that what happened earlier between us meant something, didn't you? She tried to look anywhere else but at him, she realized how foolhardy her situation had become. Her body began to shake as self-remorse washed over her. She brought her arms in tighter around herself. The vampire doesn't want to drain you. They want to turn you. They could have killed you any time they wanted to, but they didn't. Nate looked towards the catacomb tunnels and then back at her. They won't let you go. But you said that they wanted to kill me. Why did you not tell me what was really going on? Not that being turned into a vampire was any better than being murdered. Everything I told you was the truth. Does it matter if I said that they wanted to kill you or wanted your blood to add to their line? Either way you look at it, becoming a vampire is the same as becoming the walking dead, he replied. She spun herself around facing him as she braced herself with both hands on the floor, how am I supposed to trust you when one second you protect me with your life and the next second you're telling me point blank that I'm about to die? Nate walked over to the torch and picked it up. With its light illuminating the whole room, he replied, Sometime tonight you made one fatal error. You decided to trust me enough to get you out of here. I only said that I could try. The light illuminated the strong features of Nate's face, twisting them into something horrible and frightening. 
Maxine pushed her body away from him with an urge to get up and run, but she knew she would never make it out with her life. And I trusted you, she barked back. That's correct. You also trusted your life with a werewolf. <laughs>